mini games have it rough. It used to be mini games were refreshing little diversions from their parent games. Tired of bossing Goemon around Edo? Go bet on some dice or do a quiz. Can't stand one more moment of Squall's angst? Play some cards. Have nothing better to do with your life? Go experiment in the field of Chocobo eugenics. These had some substance and served to augment the experience rather than define it. Anymore though, the rise of the minigame compilation has distorted the meaning of the word into cheap, fast, low cost, and rarely entertaining. Kirby had a minigame compilation back on the SNES, reproduced several years later in a touch-enhanced DS version. By today's standards though, those words are slightly defamatory, so we'll phrase it thus. This is an assembly of rather short Kirby games, several of them in fact. Don't call them minigames. Well, except for the three that actually are. You've got two classes of game here, starting with sub-games, which support up to four players in either a shooting gallery, gluttony race, or Hanafura slapping competition. That's all well and good, but we can do better than that. This is a Kirby game after all. How about you just shrink the original Kirby's Dream Land down a bit, make it a quick four-stage affair with all the power copying, partner spawning, serious platforming action the 16-bit era could muster. Sound like a plan? Good. We've established a baseline then. Real, honest-to-goodness Kirby action just stripped down a bit. We know how to get there, now we just need to know where we're going. Well, how about similar adventures focused on putting down a rogue Dyna Cutter or neutralizing Meta Knight's airship? Effectively, you're getting six or so different Kirby games playing by generally the same rulebook and each about a quarter as long as a regular title. And then there's the Great Cave Offensive, a huge cavern full of hardcore Kirby action, or as close to that idea as any game starring a pink puffball can possibly get, with 60 treasures to unearth. Some, like the dime and the saucepan, make you wonder who buried all this crap in here. Some, like the Triforce, Falcon's Helmet, and the Screw Attack, make you wonder who killed the cast of Smash Brothers and buried the bodies here. And then you dig up a guilty-looking Mr. Saturn, but how can you get angry at that nose? I ask you. It may take several passes, some fairly advanced puzzle solving, and what I'm calling the most entertaining RPG boss fight I've ever experienced in a non-RPG complete with Earthbound style level up stats. It always comes back to Earthbound. If you're an old school Kirby fan from back before all this power stealing nonsense, the first episode will serve as a nostalgic reminder of that first adventure while acclimating you to the brave new world of mechanics including situational attacks, dash attacks, grabs, air attacks, teammate attacks, and so forth. And if you've got a friend in range, they can control your teammate monster instead of leaving it to the AI. For later comers to the party, it's a slew of slightly different ideas on the main Kirby concept, from a treasure hunt to a race, allowing for a maximum of diversity on one cart. Just don't call it a minigame compilation. That would be doing a disservice to the quality of this title. If anything, it's just a series of short, rather unrelated Kirby games, augmented with a bit of wireless multiplayer fun. The primary downside, though, is that there's no cheetah men to be had, and that's sad.